All right, so one of the biggest letdowns with the Mini 2, at least for me personally, was the fact that there wasn't any sort of flat picture profile built into the camera. Now, this may not be something that everybody is looking for because let's face it, not everybody is looking to color grade or sort of put their creative take on the Mini 2 footage. But those of you who are, this video will definitely help you out. Let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about converting the 709 files out of the Mini 2 into a log format. Why would you wanna convert your Mini files into a log format? Well, log formats are gonna give you a little bit more flexibility to color grade, color correct, and overall put your creative influence on your project. Not only that, it helps you really control the dynamic range a bit better, also, it's gonna fix one of the biggest issues I have with the Mini 2 files, which is over sharpening. There's a big, huge, common misconception when it comes to the drone community that you have to have these razor sharp images. And that just isn't the case because there's nothing filmic or really super pleasing about overly sharp images. It, it looks digital, it looks fake. More often than not, it looks like shit. So today I'm gonna to show you how to fix that really easily. We'll also compare it to the D Cinelike, Cinelike D from the uh, Mavic Air 2 so I can show you the differences and sort of the similarities between doing this. Now you will need a log uh, conversion LUT. So this is gonna take your file from Rec 709 to log formats. Um, I may include one in the link below, but you can also get these from Triune Films. Um, I think I paid like 25 bucks for this log kit. Um, it's, it's actually really good, but I'll include a link where you can purchase this. It, it's definitely worth it if you wanna take your video files to the next level. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna jump into uh, Final Cut Pro. Hey, see bad, I'm using Final Cut Pro quite a bit actually. Um, so let's go ahead and import our media for the day. So I'm gonna go to my Mini 2 folder. I've got a couple of clips here. Um, I filmed in the same spot that I've used um, the Evo 2, maybe just to sort of keep it um, all similar. So let's go ahead and we'll pull uh, clip one in. Let's go ahead and we'll pull this clip in here. And let me just trim this up here a little bit. So these are all the Mavic Mini clips. We'll pull that in and then we'll pull this clip in. This is a really long clip right here. All right, so we've got three clips. All of this was shot in the uh, log format. So let's go ahead and we'll maybe make that 25%. Is that too big? 12%? No. Can I fit it? There we go. So there we go. We just fit it in their frame. So now we can at least see what the hell we're doing. So these are all the clips here. And hey, the colors don't look terrible, right? But I like creative control and creative flexibility. And unfortunately, this doesn't offer that to me. So how do we fix this? How do we make this into a log file? Well, simply, we're just going to go over here, grab our custom LUT loader. I'm gonna drop this on my clip, go back up to my effects tab, and then I'm gonna load my custom LUT. Now I already have it in here. It's called the U9998RTL. So this is a logarithmic, 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 it's a fucking Rec 709 to log file format conversion LUT. So there is a scientific for formula behind this that is going to convert that footage. So it's not the same as dropping the saturation and dropping the contrast. This is actually formulating a true log format. Now these are generic universal LUTs, so they're not a one-to-one -one science ratio for this particular color science, but it will work for this situation. So let me drop this on there. And right out of the gate, we've already reduced an immense amount of saturation. The color is a lot flatter. It just looks um, very, very muted. And that's what we want. We want that neutral starting point. Also, if we look at the shadowy areas, and I turn this on and off, you can see that the shadows are really crunchy with the current out of the camera settings. So you'll see once we apply our LUTs and do our color grade to this, that this is gonna look a lot less crunchy and it's gonna look a lot more appealing, a softer, more subdued look, which is what I like. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one, custom loader, drop that on there, and then we'll go ahead and grab this file. And you can see we've already reduced the saturation there. And then we'll do one more for this one. This was more into the sun, harsher image, and we'll drop that onto this one. And then we'll go ahead and drop that. So there we go. So now we've converted, successfully converted all these over to a 
um, I guess a log file format. Now let's compare this to DCineLike from the uh, Mavic Air 2. So if we go to the Air 2 files, I'll go ahead and import um, this clip here. So this clip, where did it go? Where did where'd she go? Oh, here it is right here. So this is the same clip I shot, um, but this is the Mavic Air 2. So this is, um, so this DJI 001 is the mini and this right here is the Air 2. So you can see we're actually able to get the Mini 2 quite a bit flatter. And you can also see there's a subtle difference in the white balance, um, but you can see there's a difference obviously in the two files. So this is the Air 2, this is the Mini 2. So just to show you that we are getting a really nice starting base, let's go ahead and color grade this now. So I'm gonna add another custom LUT file here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a correction lot of my choice. Now you can grab really anything that you want to make this work. I'm going to go into here and I have a shit ton of lots basically that I like to use each and every time that I do any sort of color corrections, color videos. Um, I use the same style of lots. So I'm going to go to my LUT folder here. Let's go to Dropbox lots and Let's say, let's say I wanted to make this look more like the RE camera color science. I'll grab this RE neutral and actually let's do this. Let's do Utopia. That's a little more contrasty. We'll hit okay and apply that to the clip and right out of the gate, you can see it's done quite a bit here. It's done most of the heavy lifting. That's with the custom lot off or the custom log conversion off. This is before, after, before, after. So you can see we're getting sort of that RE color science. If I open my scopes up, command seven, you can see we still have immense amounts of dynamic range. Let's look at it before we applied the LUT. This is before, look at how everything sits in between 25 and 75. So you got a lot of room to work with. So if I go up to color, now I can start color grading this a little bit further and we're gonna get that really nice image because we're not over sharpened. It just looks much more appealing. Again, this is all subjective, but just to sort of show you here, I can go ahead and add a little custom curve to this, really expand those highlights down. And again, the sky is going to be subjective. Some people don't like the RE color for the sky. I personally, I think it looks cool. I like it, but that's, that's me. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to my color wheels. I feel like the image is too cool especially in the shadows. So I can go ahead and warm that up, add a little orange and maybe a little bit into the highlights areas to trick what time of day this was shot. So there you go. So that's what it looks like before, after, and then uh, I can go ahead and turn all the effects off on this. So of course, if I want to turn all the effects off, that's what it looked like right out of camera. That's what it looks like with the conversion plus the LUT. And again, I feel like this looks better. Look how much more dynamic range is in the marshy area. You can make out more of the details in the marshy areas. Now, when I, I'll put this on full display so you can see it, but so much more detail definitely looks better. All right, let's go to this one here. So we've got the log conversion. So again, this is before, after, before, after. I feel like the greens are a little bit washed out, but we're going to go ahead and fix that. We're going to drop another custom LUT file here. We're going to drop this down. And we'll do use the same lot. Actually, let's use a different lot. So I like the RE. There is a green one that does really well with green. So I'll grab that one and we'll apply that to the clip. And now we just need to go ahead and drop the shadows down because if we look at F7, again, we have a lot of data in that 75 to 25 area. So we need to go ahead and fix that. So let's go to the color curves. We'll go ahead and add a curve in here and Something to this effect, we're going to have to really pull it. This is doing much better than I would anticipate. High in the midtones here. Color wheels. This has been a tough, tough uh, clip for me. This particular little island. I don't know why it hates me. So let's go ahead and pull this down. We're just touching zero. So now we'll go ahead and pull that up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and add a little bit of saturation. Just sort of like that. And I am going to bump the warmth up in this image a little bit in the shadow. So something like that looks pretty good. Again, you don't have to use this LUT. You can use any LUT you want. I'm just using this for argument's sake. If I want to go back and look at everything beforehand, that's before, that's with it. You can see it's very stylistic. Um, we are getting much more detail 
look on the left side of the image, the left side of this island, you'll see there's much more detail in the grassy areas on the left side with the lots loaded and the colors are much more balanced here as well. So, um, and they're the, the luminance and everything is much more expanded. So I sort of dig it. Let's go to this last clip here. And this last clip here, same thing. We're going to load that custom LUT loader. So now again, we have this really flat profile. I'm going to go ahead and choose something entirely different just for argument's sake here. Let's see what we have that we can load. Uh, Daniel Schiffer. I love his LUTs. My favorite LUT from him is the Houston LUT. I'm going to load this LUT up here. Um, so this is the Houston LUT. It's more of a creative look. Um, it's more filmic-y. Um, I can choose the intensity of the LUT. So I'll just dial this back to about there. And now I'll go ahead and manually color grade this just for, you know, argument stake. So again, I'm going to add a little S curve here, give it a little more contrast. Again, there's not a lot of saturation happening right now. I'll go to color wheels and I'm, I'm wanting to expand these waveforms. So I really want to get these waveforms expanded. I don't want it touching quite at 100 and I want to go ahead and lower the shadows down, but not to where it's really touching um, the zero. Of course, I'm going to add a little bit of saturation back into here. And I feel like this is a little bit too much there. So I want to cool that off. Maybe bring it down to the green area here. Uh, and then the highlights, I don't probably need them quite as high. And I can probably cool off the image a little bit. So there you go. So that was what I would call pretty much done. Um, if we do before, after, before, after. And let's take a look at what it looked like beforehand before we put the creative spin on it. So this was creative spin and off the highlights relatively stay the same. We get a little bit more dynamic range with the lot loaded, the conversion lot, I think versus this. I don't know. That's not really the grass is more burnt this time of year. So I don't know where it's pulling all those greens in from, but um, I think that this looks more like it actually did in real life, but that's, that's me. The other thing to note is that you're not getting any band in from this lot. So one of the big things is when you start color grading footage is you're going to get banding. If you start it color grading these clips from the 709 straight out of the mini camera, you may notice in the blues or even in the darker shadowy areas, you will get like some blocky sort of not really nice artifacts in there. Again, try this out. You got nothing to lose by trying this. I mean, it could give you a really nice look. And it's also a really easy way you can match other cameras by starting with a neutral color point. You don't have to twist the colors around quite as much. Again, this is not everybody's cup of tea. This is a cup of tea. Mm. It's good sweet tea. But try it out and let me know how it works for you. I just thought this was interesting since we don't have a flat profile on the Mini 2. All right, that's going to do it for today's video tutorial. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. If you didn't, well, I can't, I can't help you. You're just you're just absolutely miserable if you didn't like this because who doesn't love the Mini 2 and, and how great it is for the price? You're crazy not to. As always, guys, stay original.